If anybody has not taken the bow tie survey, this is your last chance. So, uh, thank you so much for coming.
academics, analysts, the media to a certain extent, and they trust people like themselves, okay? So third party experts and people like themselves. The other thing that we know we're up against is that we live in a 140 character society. People have less attention today than they ever have. For those of you that are actually looking up at the screen. Um, people are bombarded with about 3,000 to 3,500 messages every day. From the billboards they see driving down the freeway, uh, to the ads that, that they see up in the uh, subway, to even the, the brand on their phone that they pick up multiple times a day. Those are all brand impressions. So how do we as a large corporation stand out and grab their attention with this little time that they have and get them to trust us at the same time? Those are the two major challenges that we face. So I came to Ford a little over two years ago from Boston, as Laura uh, uh, mentioned. But Ford wasn't really in my sights before that. It really wasn't on my radar. I, mean, I, I looked at the Blue Oval and it really didn't mean anything to me. The way you could look at the Nike swoosh or the Apple logo, and that immediately evokes kind of a universal emotion. Now that's not to say that this doesn't mean something to a wide multitude of people. There are Ford enthusiasts out there uh, in droves. But how do we start to get that to the mainstream? How do we get people to start caring about Ford Motor Company again? And in our case, uh, a big part of that is about the humanization of Ford. You know, think about it. This company was founded 107 years ago by the very man whose name is still on the logo today. And for many people, for many, many years, he was Ford Motor Company, Henry Ford. But now, in the age of mass media, mass advertising, we've dehumanized not just Ford, but many brands. And we feel that social media is an opportunity to bring out the faces of Ford, the people from behind the Blue Oval. And not just me, and not just our CEO, and not just you know a couple of people, but a wide variety of employees and customers. If we can connect consumers with other consumers and let them talk together, we're going to have more authentic, more real, and trustworthy experiences. So Ford's uh, success is really built on the one Ford plan. We hired Alan Mulally away from Boeing and brought him in four years ago as our CEO, and he put together this very simple plan, but it's quite profound. Everybody around the globe understands that this is what we're all in for. Ultimately, an exciting, viable Ford delivering profitable growth for all. Everybody can get behind that notion. And the fact of the matter is we have global manufacturing capabilities that allow us to make global platform vehicles now when traditionally we have been making vehicles just for Europe, just for Asia Pacific, just for the Americas. Well, that's all going away. We've seen how that's uh, happening through one of the stories we're going to tell. We've clearly uh, started to break apart from the pack. The fact that Fast Company would actually call us America's most surprising consumer electronics company is an indicator of the way we're going. How technology is a driver of people's attitudes these days. And our system works by you just bringing your phone or your MP3 player, whether it's an iPod or a Zoom or whatever, into the car. And the car adapts to your technology. You don't have to adapt to the car. That's transformative. And our vehicles have been winning awards. Motor Trend Car of the Year, the North American Car of the Year, from the, the International Auto Show. People are really starting to pay attention to the products that we're putting out there now. However, consumer sentiment still hasn't matched the reality. The fact of the matter is we're on par or better than the quality and reliability of Toyota and Honda now. The arbiters of quality for so many years, and we know Toyota had some missteps this year, and they're recovering from it, but we're actually up in that category now not where people used to put us. And it's going to take a while for us to get that consumer sentiment up to match the reality. And that's part of why we're working so hard to build our reputation. 
So we subscribe to the Woody Allen theory of social media. <laughs> You know, Woody Allen once famously said 90% of life is just showing up. Well, so is social media. It's about being where people expect you to be. I can open my laptop on any given night that American Idol is running, which we've been a sponsor since the first season, and search for Ford on Twitter. And guess what? People are not only mentioning Ford, but they're mentioning Ford with the at sign in front of it, as if they either know or expect that we have a corporate Twitter account that's our name. We, when we reply back to them, it usually freaks them out. Hey, why'd you say that? And you get two responses. The majority of people are like, that is really cool that a global mega company is taking the time to respond to me individually about a question I have or a comment I have. The minority get freaked out because they're like, what are you stalking me? <laughs> well, it is a public forum. Um, so that's, and, and Twitter, you know, for us has been a really important part of our overall social media strategy because it's one-on-one -on -one communication in the public square. We're touching somebody individually or a small group of people individually, but guess what? All of their followers and all of our followers get to see it happening. And that means our reputation lies because people see that we're engaged and then we get it. And we're probably providing valuable information to them at the same time. Now, the Yogi Berra corollary of the Woody Allen theory of social media is uh, it's the other half that's hard. Yogi was never that good at math. Um, but it's what you do when you get there, right? It's, it's just what I said. It's about providing value, whether it's informing, entertaining, debating, providing hard data, links for people to go check out exactly what you're talking about. That's what really differentiates us. And I'll show you how that works. We've got a number of accounts uh, across the web. We try to aggregate a number of them on a site we call affordstory.com. Got a whole section of Ford social networks there. Our YouTube channels, Flickr account, uh, Delicious page, all of our Twitter accounts, our Facebook pages, etc. There's a lot to keep up with, but we want to give people a choice as to what matters to them. And ultimately, we know it's about this notion of providing value, building relationships with people over time. So it's about being relevant in the moment. It's about being attentive to what people are saying about you and actually taking action so that they can respond. The fact that they actually have called us out previously as the only automaker on Twitter, it's not actually true, but that's the perception that they have because of our level of activity.